interacting with a deployed contract. Checklist. We analyze the compilation output of a Solidity smart contract. Then we'll analyze the previous contract deployment transaction. Finally, we'll load up and interact with the deployed contract in Remix IDE. First thing first, we'll explore the compilation output. Go to the Solidity compiler tab, click on the compilation details button. When we compile the Solidity contract, it outputs a lot of data. Let us take a look at the important ones. The bytecode is the binary format of a Solidity contract, and it is usually represented in hexadecimal code. Then we have the opcode or assembly, which is the assembly code equivalent to our contract. Finally, we have the AB, which usually contains the details of the public functions, such as the name, input parameters, output varieties, etc. The bytecode is the format in which we store contract to the Ethereum blockchain. We can see this if we examine the deployed contract transaction. Okay, let us load that up in either scan. And if we scroll down and look at the input data and match it with the bytecode we saw in the Remix ID, we can see both of them are the same. Now that we have seen the three important outputs of the Solidity compiler, let us take a look at the role of each of these outputs. Once again, when we compile the Solidity contract, it outputs bytecode, AB, and assembly code. A quick note, the compiler's name is Solsi. So the bytecode, we store it to the Ethereum virtual machine, and in turn, we get the address. The contract address is an identifier or pointer to the contract. So when we want to execute the code, we know where it is stored and which contract we want to execute. Now let us see what happens when we call the store function of the contract. Remember, the contract is stored as bytecode in the EVM. And we usually interact with the EVM using a high level language like JavaScript. So how this happens is we create a message or a function call using the address of the contract and the details of the function. The details of the function can be obtained from the AB. Using the message call, the EVM will execute the contract function pointed by the contract address and return the proof of execution, which is the transaction hash. Now about the final output, the assembly code. The assembly is used to calculate the gas required to execute a function. Each assembly code instruction has an associated gas cost. The cumulative sum of the gas cost of all these assembly codes executed within the function is the gas cost. The gas limit for a transaction is set by the user based on the estimated gas cost of the transaction plus SFT margin, ensuring it does not exceed the network's block gas limit. Now we know how the smart contract deployment and interaction work. Let us try loading up the deployed contract and interacting with it. First, copy the ABA from the compiler tab. Go to the file explorer and create a new file. Let us name it storage.ab and paste the ABA into it. Now go to the deploy and run transaction tab and ensure we are connected to the correct network. Scroll down to see an option called at address where we need to paste the deployed contract address. Copy it from the transaction receipt and paste it to the text field next to the at address option and click on the at address button. It will ask for a confirmation. Click OK. Now we have the same interface as the one we used when we deployed the contract. We previously stored the number 123 and if we did everything correctly, we should be able to retrieve it. Click retrieve and we got it. Thank you.